What's up guys, hope you're doing well. If you have been trying to get a bigger bag for a while, you probably have gotten advice from multiple sources. And as a result, you have gotten a variety of approaches. Some awfully bad. They also look cool and I really respect pull-up strength. Wide grip pull-ups are going in A tier against an inclined bench. Plus, being able to focus on one lat at a time is great for preventing asymmetries. So while I'm tempted to put them in A tier, I'm gonna be lenient and put them in S tier as well. So while I'm tempted to put them in A tier, I'm gonna be lenient and put them in S tier as well. That's S tier! That's S tier! Spin on the same movement. That is not S tier. That is unbelievable, dude. That is unbelievable. And so I'm excellent. Right now, I'll be sharing an almost guaranteed way of getting big lats. It's a realistic, long-term strength standard that over the years, I haven't seen anyone fail in getting incredible results. What am I talking about? Acquiring a 300 pound total weighted pull up for reps. We are going to target the lats in priority. And the next one is the king for it. You already know what I'm going to be talking about right now. It's going to be the pull up. The pull up is a no brainer. It has to end up in Ujiro tier. I do not want to hear anything about biomechanically, it's not inclined to the fibers of the lats. I do not give a fuck. Best backs I've ever seen in my life are on people who train pull-ups. If you have a shitty back and people tell you to do something else than pull-ups because apparently pull-ups don't work, tell them to go fuck themselves and go do your pull-ups. It has made one of the biggest difference in my back aesthetics. Everyone should be doing pull-ups. And... Of course, I have my own biases as a calisthenics pro. But it stands that pull-ups are the GOAT of back developers. That's why he's the GOAT! The GOAT! <laughs> and it makes the process that much simpler too. You build up to your first pull-up, then you get your first 5 reps, then 10, then 15, and then you start adding weight. Right? Well, hear me out. What if you didn't have to? What if instead of progressing via weight, you used another strategy? One that I'd say is as simple and as effective, but way more convenient. What is this oh-so-esoteric, unbelievable, revolutionary strategy that will add 20 pounds of muscle to your lats and traps, pay your taxes, and get that one girl to text you back? Wow, that got a bit personal. Just kidding, I only text you. Anyways, what I'm talking about is applying one of the other variables available to us to apply progressive overload. Instead of increasing the weight through the same path or range of motion, we increase the range of motion itself going from a regular pull-up to a chest-to-bar pull-up. You're going to love this. Trust me, what you're seeing now is my normal state. This is a Super Saiyan. And this, this is what is known as a Super Saiyan that has ascended past a Super Saiyan. Or you could just call this a Super Saiyan 2. This is what I have been doing for a long time. But eventually, this got easier as well. Quote unquote, uneasy. I can do 10 plus chest to bar pull ups, which there is nothing wrong with going higher reps. <coughs> but I want something that will allow me to stick to conventional rep ranges without having to do one arm chin up variations. What could I do? Well. Yes, to go! Even further beyond! Sternum pull-ups are, in my honest opinion, the best back movement of all time. It is the perfect combination between a row, a pull-up, and a pull-over. Depending on the grip, wide grip being my favorite, you will feel your back stretching and contracting in such a way 
that there is some slight biasing, but still, everything gets smoked. If you think you are strong on pull-ups, it is because you haven't tried these. My 10 plus chest of bar pull-ups turned into reps of 4 to 6 with these. No matter the grip, no matter the tempo I use, these pull-ups are brutal. My favorite pull-ups up to that point were L-sits, assisted one-arm chin-ups, super wides, and behind the neck. But after incorporating wide grip sternums, let's just say that they are in a tier of their own. One is, of course, going to be included. It is legendary to the point that if there was a tier above you, zero tier, I would put it there. And that is the sternum pull-up, also known as the Gironda pull-up. How do you perform it? The way you do them is the following. First, you start off from a full dev hang, leaning back. Then, contrary to what you might think, you don't want to pull in a vertical line. What you want to do is imitate a pullover motion while you pull up. Then, you're going to lean back as much as possible and as much as your mobility allows because we don't want you getting into very uncomfortable positions as you go up. Then, touch or get as close to the bar at the top. Immediately after this, I recommend controlling the eccentric as much as possible before going again into a full dead hang and repeat for reps. I know it sounds difficult, because it is. So what should I do if I can't do them yet, you ask? You want to incorporate the regression of them, the chest to war. Instead of weighted pull-ups, replace them by very controlled chest to war pull-ups. Why not just weighted pull-ups? Strength radiates 15 degrees in all directions. There's a radiation effect. Joint angle specificity dictates that performance radiates 15 degrees in all directions. Meaning, if you do the clavicle pull-ups, that's going to help you if you try learning the sternum pull-ups. If you do sternum, it's going to help your clavicle. If you do clavicle, it's going to help chin over the bar. If you do chin to bar, it's going to help you right about here and there. Getting stronger on weighted pull-ups will have some carryover, of course. But by the principle of specificity, we are going to get better at high range of motion pull-ups faster by doing high range of motion pull-ups. Now, once you're able to do them, how should we program them? Well, for programming, similar to plyometrics, <coughs> we should put it at the beginning of a session to get the most out of the movement. Contrary to assisted one-arm chin-ups or weighted pull-ups, since the absolute load of the movement is going to be super low, we can afford to go to failure on low reps of 3 to 5 or 4 to 6. And, on top of that, we can even do some beyond failure techniques like partials, quote unquote on partials, going from sternum to chest to bar to regular pull ups, rest pause, or just eccentrics. Alternatively, you can do them on your lighter sessions and leave the weighted pull ups on your heavier ones. In terms of volume, two to four, maybe even five sets of these a week, and you are good to go. Definitely give these a shot and tell me how it goes. If you're interested in learning how to program, getting your program reviewed, or getting coached for just $30, feel free to shoot me a DM on Instagram at Protein Man Supremacy. Otherwise, you have my buy me a coffee link if you want to donate, and you also have like a million free programs in my link tree in the description. As always guys, thanks for watching.